Okay, I'm calling the meeting to order. Okay. Um, county and member roll call. Okay, who's here from Adams County? Uh, Sam Calvin is, and then we've got a couple of our pods on as well. Okay. So be groups. Great. All right, Sherry. Um, Athens. Anyone from Athens? Nope. Brown. Amanda is usually here, but I do not see her. Go ahead. Okay. Clinton. <laughs> I'm sorry, you said Adams a minute ago. Adams, Adams County's here. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Brown? Yep. No one from Clinton. Okay, Clinton. Say it. See anybody from Fayette? Okay. Gaia. Nope. Okay. Highland. Something taking this. Uh, Jackson. Striking out today, aren't we? Uh, uh, huh? Anyone from Jackson? Nobody from Jackson. Okay. Lawrence. Okay. Um, Meg. Am I going too fast? Nope. Um, we just don't have a lot of people on today. Hopefully they may be still joining or. Okay. Um, pick away. Yes, we have Travis and myself. Okay. Um, Pike. No. Okay. Ross. Ross. I mean, I guess we have Josh, uh, <laughs> but I don't see Allison today. Yeah, yeah. Um. All right, go ahead and cherry. Okay, so yeah, me and Bill, I don't know if Teresa's here. Yep, Sherry, Bill, and Teresa. Okay. Mm -hmm. I had a Vitten. Vitten okay. is the last one. Okay, no, I did see uh, Ruby Sloan. Ruby, what county are you from? Oh, that's Aaron. Aaron. Hey, Aaron. Yeah, awesome. That's Lawrence County. Oh, who? Aaron Cahal. Okay. Awesome. Okay, great. Okay. Now, um, the minute. He's going to read the minute. Yeah, Um. real quick, uh, for new people, I don't think we have any new people. We just have a couple guests that have joined us already. Josh Clater is... Uh, from Ross County. He'll be talking to us today about a handicap ramp, downtown handicap ramp project. Um, and then we also have Marcy Strotter, who is an advocate from Franklin County. Uh, you guys have probably all seen Marcy somewhere uh, around the state um, presenting probably at multiple things that you've been, um, if you've gone to any advocacy events, but Marcy's gonna be talking to us about the charting the life course. Um, uh, portfolio of hers uh, later on today. So, um, welcome. And uh, uh, if you ever have any questions or need anything um, about our group, we do have a web page on on SoCog's website that has our meeting information and our dates and times. Courtney, real quick, I have a question. Yes. So I was looking at the email that you sent out the other day to remind us about the meeting. Yes. And I clicked on the YouTube link. Yep. 
and it takes me straight into Zoom. It doesn't even take me to the link for the YouTube video. Oh, interesting. Okay. Well, I will make sure I fix that. It takes you to Zoom? Yep. Okay. Maybe it got the wrong hyperlink. Um, I had to I had to completely hand type in the link this morning. Okay. Got it. Okay. Hi, Teresa. Awesome. Hey, Thanks. Hi, Bill. Thanks, Teresa. Yeah. Okay, great. All right, go ahead with the uh, agenda, Sherry. Okay, the approval of the last month's meetings. Who's going to read the meetings? Oh, last month. I'm volunteer or Travis. I'll do it. Are we ready? Yep. Okay. Meeting minutes from March 16, 2021. Meeting was held virtually on Zoom. Counties present and meeting were Adams, Brown, Clinton, Fayette, Highland, Lawrence, Pickway, Ross, and Scioto. And agenda items number one, Sherry Adams, acting president, called the meeting to order. Conducted county member roll call. 19 attendees. Courtney D. Facilitator announced that the meeting was being recorded and our meetings will be available on so-called YouTube channel. Number two, Travis Dresback, co facilitator, read the G January meeting minutes. Sherry Adams, Sayota County, asked for a motion to approve the meeting minutes. Motion by Buffy Enoch. Fayette County to approve and Nicole Highland County seconded the motion. Motion to ask. Sherry Adams, acting president, announced no changes to Treasurer's report. Bill Adams, Scioto County, made a motion to approve, and Buffy Enoch, Fayette County, accepted it into the motion. Open issues, working together for change. Topic was discussed and announced that it would be a new, ongoing open issue for each meeting. Bill Adams, Scioto County, gave us information on the ADA versus historic buildings. Buildings should be accessible to all. New builds are required to be ADA compliant. The historical sites do not have to make changes to their existing building. Buffy, Enoch, Fayette County discussed having issues with public transportation because it is still not available due to the pandemic. Allison Shoemaker, um, Ross County discussed her ongoing struggles with being banned to go into certain stores or organizations, specifically the BMB, to renew her driver's license because she cannot wear a mask. Allison has been reaching out to legislators state level to voice her concerns and support to revoke our governor's powers to mandate masks and vaccines. Allison reminded us that we need to speak up about any issues we are having because it was only supposed to take two weeks to flatten the curve and now it has been an entire year. She stated that people need to stop living in fear. Willie Jones, good life facilita facilitator from OACB, presented on how to be a leader of your life. The presentation was a good reminder on how to speak up for ourselves and empower us to be advocates. The group was able to discuss the goods and bads of their service delivery and how to approach a provider to make this change if necessary. Discussion about inviting high school students to be a part of our meetings. Our group thought it was a good idea to hear their issues and teach them about self-advocacy. Amanda Brannock, Brown County discussed the program PRETS, P-R-E-T-S, and this program includes an introduction into self-advocacy. So if we can invite high school students, then we can promote through that program. Nate Boatman, Highland County, talked about Highland County's transition program and offered to invite their transitions coordinator to talk with us at our next meeting. Teresa Rowland con contracts with a vendor for Pretz, but herself, Bill and Sherry have the opportunity to take Project STIR into high schools. And their idea was for the high school students start a junior advocacy group. Imagine if our current advocates could, would have had all of these programs available to them. Travis Dressback, Pickway County mentioned not knowing a lot of things in high school because his guidance counselors did not think he needed to know. Willie's presentation would be great for high school students or newer advocates in the learning process. It took Bill Adams, Sayota County, 78 years to get started after high school because there were no transition programs. Travis dressed back, Pickway County was mainstreamed through school and did not receive services from county board. Therefore, he did not even know that the county board existed as a resource. Nate Boatman, Highland County, let us know that their tradition coordinator would bring a few high school students to people first meetings. Upcoming events, Tech Ambassador event today, 316.21 at 2 p.m. 
Zoom to Zoom details and registration links for meetings will be sent out in a follow-up email. Sherry Adams, acting president, asked for a motion to adjourn the meeting. Buffy Enoch Fayette County motion to adjourn, and Bill Adams cited County seconded. Motion passed. The meeting ended at twelve forty-seven p.m. Thank you, Travis. You're welcome. Thank you, Travis. You're welcome. Um. Who? Uh, does everybody approve of the meeting? Minutes. The meeting minutes. Somebody want a motion to approve? Um, Bill yeah. does. Bill. Okay. Great. And do we have a second? I'll second. Travis. Okay. Okay. Great. Now, the treasurer's report still says the same. <laughs> No, no change in the Treasury Report. Okay. Open issues. Um, working together for a change. Open discussion on individual policy level issues. Um, Bill Adams, South County. He had an article in the Portsmouth Daily Times. Okay. All right, guys, can you guys see my screen? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. So this was the article that came out in the Portsmouth Daily Times. Um, I did give you guys the link, but uh, it's the city's old infrastructure, a challenge for the DD community. Um, it's kind of long, but it's it's an awesome article. Uh, so if you guys don't mind, I'll, I'll kind of read down through this. Um, the end of March concluded National DD Awareness Month, but members of the Scioto County Board say its mission of bettering lives carries on year round. Among its biggest challenges, superintendent says it's ensuring a safe and accommodating environment for 800 people in its care, working with them from birth through adulthood. The difficulty comes down to infrastructure, Many local buildings and sidewalks in place before the passage of the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990. Their Gaia Street School serving 70 students, work has been done to build a ramp, elevator, and widening of door frames with assistance from the commissioners. These moves appreciated, uh, but would prefer a one-story building in the car if the cards were on the table. It is incumbent upon us to make sure if anybody in this community has an accessible building, it's us. Uh, he said the very Vern Rife School where the board is located was built in 1909. It's a charming building with ample space, although it does have its obstacles. When we do become aware of an obstacle, as Bill Adams pointed out, we do our best to overcome it. Uh, Self-advocate Bill Adams is an active voice in raising these concerns, doing so as locally as the courthouse to as far as Washington, D.C., as a service recipient, he is thankful for the board's work helping him at Shawnee State University, um, or as a U Sha Shawnee State University student with his job and his marriage to Sherry. Created to ensure equal rights and opportunities for people with disabilities, the ADA works hand in hand with Adam's goals. In, 19 in 93, he went to Philadelphia for a two week seminar to learn about the legislation and how to use his communication aid. The lessons he received ultimately inspired Adams to attend college, saying the ADA has a special place in my heart. It was the first thing I made was it was the first thing I was made aware of as an advocate. He said, joking that the 93 program revealed his age. Because of the ADA, buildings should be accessible to all. According to the 2010 ADA standards, all public constructions after January 26 of 92 had to readily accessible to, or had to be readily accessible to and usable by individuals with disabilities. While exceptions such as proven impracticability are included for these newer builds, alterations to historic facilities are also ordered to comply to the maximum extent feasible. For example, if alterations for compliance can be shown to harm or wipe out the building's historical significance, then these changes are not ordered to take place. Adams understands historical organizations may want to preserve its original layout, but at the same time, he does see it as another barrier for disabled people to face when there are ADA exemptions. Oftentimes, this is unfair to somebody who may be in a wheelchair because of the times there were no routes to get into buildings in the old days. So 
solutions can be cheap, he said, the installation of portable ramps for one-step entrances, rearranging furniture, and low-density carpeting to improve wheelchair maneuverability among multiple ideas. The path to entering these buildings, however, can prove to be a literal obstacle in itself, cracked sidewalks, and a lack of crossing road buttons making for unsafe travel. Part of a proposed series of infrastructure improvements, uh, city engineer Nathan Prosh announced earlier this year that his department was conducting surveys of both Portsmouth roads and sidewalks. We really need to be investing because I don't really need to tell you that our infrastructure is deteriorating. Um, with sidewalks and curb repairs valued at 27.5 million for just half the work, additional expenses would come through the addition of detectable warning devices at the bottom of curb ramps. Through 2015 at ODOT decision, Prosh said a city entity like Portsmouth would be solely financially responsible for the project, focused over the next two years along 2nd Washington and Gay Streets in Route 23. You can probably guess there are not a lot of ADA compliant curb ramps in the city. Having spoken with ODOT previously, Prosh said the cost is significant and will either be an in-house expense or bid out to other companies. Having the cash on hand for this project where roughly 140 ramps are needing repairs at the tune of $2,000 to $2,500 each is also rooted in history. That's just so much money, so much time, said Prosh when asked for a potential timeline. We were a town of 40,000 plus people and now we're only a town of 20,000. We have all the infrastructure to maintain with half the revenue coming in. So I'm sure Josh is shaking his head because this is probably the same kind of stuff that was talked about um, uh, in Ross County as well. Um, but thank you, Bill, for being a voice and advocating for, for Portsmouth and Scioto County because this is where this change starts. And we're not even paying attention to your age either. We didn't even do the math. I What? Bill, are you typing something? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Got it. Oh. Kind of gooped up on the year. It was 97 or 98. Okay, got it. Got it. It's a little little earlier than uh or a little later on and than what 93. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, so what we're going to do here, um, I know I've been talking about the last couple months about downtown Chillicothe had um, portable ramps put in. So I'm going to invite Josh Clayton to the floor. Josh, if you'd like to introduce yourself, and then we kind of just want some motivation from you and, and to learn from you on how in the world we can do this in other parts of our region and not just Chillicothe. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm the Community Development Manager at First Capital Enterprises. So I, um, once again, work down here, take our individuals out in the community as much as possible, whether it be downtown Chillicothe or trips all over the state of Ohio or outside of the state of Ohio. So I also moved to downtown Chillicothe once I started this job and got to explore it for the first time because I lived outside the city limits for years and realized there's great history in downtown Chillicothe, lots of new stores coming in, new restaurants, a really good flow going to Chillicothe, but there was still... Uh, barriers of getting in these historic buildings. Um, a lot of them have filled stone steps. Um, and once again, you can't alter historical sites at, in most places and definitely in Chillicothe. Now, Chillicothe already went above and beyond by repairing sidewalks. Um, if you've been down there probably, Courtney, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. So a lot of stuff's yeah. really happening on that end. So um, the good thing was I was in a big class, which I think you were in right before the pandemic hit. That's where I met you at First Capital. Yeah. And I was with Tiffany Baldwin. Well, Tiffany is in charge of downtown Chillicothe, which essentially it's a nonprofit that she speaks on behalf of all the businesses. So she's the, she can go to the meetings when they can't. So we were talking, I was talking to her. She was in my big class. I also worked with my local chamber of commerce which is uh, Bobby Kello, Mike Throne, and got in touch with more with Tiffany. And she said, well, we found out the Pioneer Center had a grant through the Landrum account that the funding they got, and she was a grant writer. So she wrote the grant and we went to a local metal shop and asked what we could do. And they helped me design ramps and we got 18 of them done. That is so cool. So what um, yeah. is that? company local that designed the ramps for you? Yeah, it was Brock's Machine Shop down here on Douglas. They're just down the street from our location. Okay. Uh, okay. They do all metal fabrication for uh, Pixel. We used to be Mead. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, stuff for Kenworth, so they're doing all kinds of out-of-the-box stuff. So we went in and we designed a ramp with uh, the main guy there, and he found a light way, but strong enough way to handle a standard wheelchair. Um, they're aluminum diamond tread which keeps the weight down. And then he built a skeleton structure underneath. And you literally, you just measure the field stone height of the step for the person's business. And then he he's, knows how to do the design that makes the, the right slope. And they're small enough, they're light enough to fit behind the door of the business. So once the business got it, they could promote it. And then someone with a wheelchair, a walker, any kind of disability that needs access in, they would just call that store and the okay. bring the ramp out and set it down. Okay, what about power wheelchairs? Yeah, it will handle they're heavier. Yes, everything. The regular wheelchairs. Yeah, it will handle all of them. We measured it's wide enough to handle any wheelchair, even if it's a little wider or it's a power one for the weight. The, uh, I saw that. Yeah. There is the, yeah, guys, there is the ramp. If you so, see at the bottom, the skeleton is really high strength metal, but it's not heavy. So it's not made of steel, but it's a very high grade aluminum. All of it is, but it keeps the weight down. That that ramp weighs around 20 pounds. Okay. And that was that was a big thing for us because a lot of these shops downtown hire young high school kids. You know, it may not be the strongest person that can lift a big <laughs> behemoth ramp all the time. Right. 
and it's also the way it's sloped, it's out of the way. So if you are walking right here where you see Paul pushing um, him up, you can still get around and leave it there throughout the day. And then they could take them in at night so they're not stolen or anything. So huh. that, was another, that was another fear. If something's permanent, it won't be permanent just because there's thieves, unfortunately. Right. So the grant, the grant paid for the builds of the ramps. Yeah. How are they distributed between? Well, that's where you, if you partner up with your BAB or your, sorry, BAB is our thing, our chambers yeah. and your downtown Chilcothy group or us, downtown Chilcothy, any county, any city, uh, they know kind of the flow of downtown. They know who's either leaving uh, to start a business somewhere else or a new business is coming in. Uh, and that's where I went with Tiffany. Okay. Tiffany was able to go, this business is leaving, unfortunately, because of the pandemic but there's a new one coming in. Let's hold off on them. Hey, this guy's really doing good. He gets good business flow. Let's choose them. Unfortunately, you couldn't pick everybody. Right. And so, so it was at, there was no cost to the business owner yes. to keep this. They just needed to have the space in their store behind their door to. Yeah. To and be open-minded. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Now, the only problem was that if you had to purchase one, they run around a thousand to $1,200 in that range. The best thing to do with our company we dealt with was team up with three, okay, we did the 18 for the grant. If we found out three other businesses wanted it, the cost would come down below a thousand because okay. the metal is cut into proportions and it comes in enough length to make three reasonably priced. Got it. So if anybody would call us, we'd say, hey, try to find two other businesses with you so you can pay out of pocket, unfortunately. so. But, but buying a thousand dollar ramp and it brings in money throughout the year, it obviously pays for itself. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, does anybody have any questions for Josh? Yeah, um, Bear Daisy. Josh, yeah. oh. Bear Daisy's got a question. Okay, we have Bill and Travis. All right, Bill, go ahead. Would you would be willing to branch outside of Chilla Coffee? Yep, if I mean, I could always help. Uh, the best thing to do is find out um, someone that can open a barrier for me of someone. I don't know everybody in every county, obviously. So just uh, if you can be, if you can get with your chamber president or your chamber assistant, they usually have a president and assistant. And then find out if they have a downtown person like I have Tiffany. I'm blessed to have Tiffany in our town who's, you know, developing Chillicothe all the time. Hi. Hi. Josh, I'll be in touch with you. I'm Teresa from Scioto County. Okay. Yep. Nice to meet yep. you. Well, and that's kind of two. Got the river, so I'll be down. <laughs> yeah. And that's uh, that's kind of what I'm hoping, having you on, Josh, and kind of talking to us. Um, our advocates, there's no reason why our advocates can't go to our Chamber of Commerce. Right. And talk to them about this. And, and uh, you yeah. know, yeah, we already have a vendor in Chillicothe, but... Um, yeah. You know, I think it's a this is a great step. So, Travis, uh, what was your question? Who was the grant through, Josh? Uh, the Pioneer had it. It was an Appalachian thing they set up. Uh, a man named George Landrum. We served his uh, brother for years, and he donated money to us, a church, and to the Pioneer. The Pioneer stretched it to grants. Now, yeah. are you talking about like going and reaching out to like the downtown business associations? Is that what mm -hmm. you're talking about? Did you yes. raise? Okay. Yes. Yeah, and usually most towns are historic and they're trying to develop downtown, have one of those set in place. Right, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, and because our group is, so Josh, our group is uh, the so-called region. So we hey. go Pickaway County, you know, down to Meigs County. I mean, hey. you heard our roll call. Yeah. And so it would be really cool if we could kind of work together to maybe, mm -hmm. maybe put some kind of little selling Project. point project together and go as a group to <laughs> present um to our commerce or to our boards of dd i don't i don't know where we would start well, i mean i think go okay. ahead uh, my business after business is tonight a matter of fact at my building here so i'll talk to bobby maybe bobby and mike can do something and spread it to each chamber to start yeah right uh, yeah, do a so-called version uh little zoom meeting and uh, I can set it on that with Bobby. I'll talk to Bobby yeah. tonight about that. Okay, cool. That break the ice. Yeah. 
Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, yeah Travis. Josh. Yeah. Um, Pickaway County is doing something like that. Our, our county board here in Circleville. Okay. Pickaway County is doing something with the uh, Visitors Bureau. Okay. Where we're also doing a ramp project trying to get um, ramps built for different businesses. That's awesome. At, at, at no charge to them. Yeah. Um, it's good. It's through a company in Kingston that's building all the ramps for us. Okay. Yeah. So sure. We're doing kind of the same thing. That's awesome. Pickway's got a lot of group too. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's kind of where we started talking about this. Travis has a, you know, power wheelchair and can't mm -hmm. get into, there were some new shops that opened up and right. there was no way to yeah. access them. Um, yeah. and, and Sherry, uh, Sherry, your brother has a shop in Portsmouth, right? Oh, in Ironton. In Ironton, in Ironton. And it was like, you know, only part of the building is accessible. Right. And so maybe that portable ramp needed to be inside of his business to get down to another level or whatever, yeah. but- and I, I did learn with um, helping the guys develop because I went out and measured. All, he told me what to look for to go help him measure for the ramps. You get 12, 14 inches and higher. It really makes the slope really steep. Absolutely. So you might, you might, might not always look at the front entrance of a business. Go to an alley that might have good accessibility. See if they have a side door. Mm -hmm. So yeah. don't just focus on the front entrance. Don't get me wrong. I'd rather use the front one, obviously. Right. But if they have a parking lot out back and they have a door, same way, you might have a better way to get in. That and that's, that's that with the, the managers and the business owners. So. Josh, the business that Courtney was talking about here in Pickway County that I had trouble getting into. Yeah. It's not a problem getting uh -huh. in the front door. Yeah. Is that they have six steps to go up into their main landing once yeah. you get inside the door. Yeah. Yeah. You got to almost do like a stair lift. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. for a, you know, a platform to go yeah. up the steps. Yeah, I had a cold, I had a place on Water Street was the same way. We ended up having to go out back. It had as soon as you got in, you were fine, but then you had to go up three steps again, additional, and just the the slope was just too much for a wheelchair to feel comfortable coming up or down it. So, and I talked to the owner about of that business because I went to school with her, and yeah. they do have a side entrance that I could possibly get into. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, okay, yeah, that's great. I mean, yeah. it's good to be open minded and think about different things. Absolutely. Like I said, having, and, and going out of a coming out of a pandemic, hopefully, uh, you'll know which businesses survived or what's going to stay or yeah. who's coming in to replace them mm -hmm. out there yeah. too so with your chambers and stuff. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Josh. Um, I think that maybe our group will be in touch with you in the yeah. future and uh, maybe we can uh, figure out a way to kind of start making some change. Um, mm -hmm kind of with this and more parts of the, the state. Yep. Anytime you guys need me, First Capital allows me to do that. We're, we're here awesome. for everybody. We do serve our folks, obviously, but we want to help everybody in some way. So okay. great. Great. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. No problem. Thanks, guys. Yep. All right. Have uh, a great day. Yeah, you Thanks. too. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye. Uh, okay, Sherry, we'll go ahead and uh, go on with the agenda. Okay. Um, new business um, the transition program for the high school students okay the and guest I think, speaker i'm sorry no you're fine i think molly just joined us or i just let her in <laughs> yeah to, uh, so molly can you see us i have so many pictures here yeah i can see you here we go now i can see you Awesome. Uh, so Molly, we had an awesome conversation and you were a big part of it. Um, so if your ears were burning about a month ago, that's <laughs> why. Uh, but we uh, just have a lot of programs going around in the SoCog, going on around the SoCog region in um, the transition world. And um, we just kind of, you know, Nathan said that you were doing a lot of you know, neat things and bringing high school students to people first meetings and uh, just doing a lot of good things in Highland County. So we thought we'd invite you on um, just to kind of talk to our group because if we can be of any help on teaching advocacy in the high schools um, or just getting them involved so they understand what being an advocate is, we don't really know kind of what our role may be in the future, but we know it's maybe somewhere where we could help. Um, so, uh, we appreciate you being here and just kind of excited to hear what what what's going on in Highland County. Awesome. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. Um, so I have a little bit of a PowerPoint that just kind of shows what I do. Um, I do I 
teach in five different categories. So let me share my screen. Let me know, is it oh. allowing you to do that? No. Mm -mm. Let's see. Um, if not, I can just talk about it. Let's see, only all participants. Now you should be able to do it. Okay. And uh, welcome, Nate. I saw Nate jumped on too. <laughs> All right, so you should be able to see my screen now. Um, yep. I won't go through all of it. I know you guys are probably pretty busy too, but I, this, I do the pre-employment transition services. Um, I work with kids that are school age 14 to 22 and they still have to be in school. And I am contracted with um, OOD, which is Opportunities for Ohioans with Disabilities. Um, these are the five different categories. I. I teach and I go over with kids, it's job exploration, and we explore different career options, work-based learning, which is kind of going in job shadowing and um, networking, self-advocacy, of course, and advocating in the workplace and at school, um, counseling on post-secondary, which is um, if they're interested in college, things like that. And we also talk about advocating for yourself in college and um, going to like disability services at the different colleges and things. Um, and then workplace readiness, which is like all of the soft skills and what employers are looking for. Um, do you want me to talk about a little bit about workplace readiness or you want me to go on straight into self-advocacy? Uh, what does the group know. think? Um, I guess we're probably more focused on the advocacy part of it. So, so this is what I go over when we do advocacy. Um, we talk about disclosure, so talking about, um, you know, should I disclose my disability to my bosses, my coworkers, things like that. Um, I do go over the different advocacy groups here in the region. Um, and like Nathan had told you, if a student wants to go to an advocacy group meeting, um, I'll take them. Um, it's kind of hard to do that because if they're at different times or sometimes they're in the middle of school. So um, I have had some advocates in the past that we've called and the kids could talk to, which is great. So if anybody is willing to do that, that would be great. Um, kids wanna hear firsthand what are things that you guys are talking about. We go over rights and responsibilities. We do some role playing. Um, we talk about strengths and weaknesses, goals, IEPs, because a lot of kids don't attend their IEPs. So I would love for advocates to talk about maybe if they ever attended their IEP meetings um, just for them to be a part of that. I don't think they think they can be a part of their education plans. Wow. Um, that, that really, I did not know yeah. that. And that really yeah. surprises me. So yeah. Maybe a lot of kids like, don't attend or they just sit there and they don't ask any questions. Wow. Yeah. We that's always nice. ask questions. Mm. Yeah. At our meetings. Mm. Yeah. That's and that's great. Nice. Like I, I would love for kids to know that like, how to speak up in a meeting or what kind of questions to ask or maybe be able to talk to adults and see the things that they're dealing with in their workplace and talk about the goals that they could have for their lives in school now and how that could, how that could, you know, how they could handle that. So um, we also talk about accommodations, informed choice, self-determination. What are the hiring advantages for companies to hire people with disabilities? Um, and then we talk a lot about their abilities. Um, some of the things we go over, we do different scenarios. So like, when is the right time to disclose why, who we disclose to, but I would love for students to get firsthand experiences with people like, Hey, I disclosed to my boss and this is how it's helped me, or I didn't disclose it to my boss and it's not, it's never affected, um, my job. So I would love for them to be able to talk to advocates and find those things out. Um, yeah, we just do a bunch of different scenarios. We also talk about discrimination in the workplace. Um, what is discrimination? What does it look like? What does it sound like? In this scenario, um, this guy is applying for a job and he asks for someone that works there to help him fill out the application. And they say, no, we're not allowed to do that. Is that discrimination? No, it's not yes. because they're not allowed to help fill out applications. Um, but we talk about who, who could help fill out applications. Um, and then we do different scenarios, like should I tell the boss, should I stay out of it? Should I say something? 
we do a bunch of different um, advocacy scenarios like that. Like if you have a no dating policy at your work and you find out that two coworkers are dating, should yeah. you stay out of it? Should I tell the boss? Should I say something to them? Or, you know, what if you have a coworker that's telling you personal things about themselves and you don't want to hear it? How would you stand up and say something about that? Um, or if you have coworkers that keep interrupting you while you're working, how would a self-advocate handle that? So um, I would love for my students to get real world experiences from you guys or, or listen to you guys about how you handle that stuff. Cause I can tell them, but I'm, I'm not a self-advocate myself, you know, so I don't, I don't know what to tell them. So they would, you know, if they hear it firsthand from you guys, I think that would really help. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. And I know that like, I think that Pickaway County is looking for the same thing. Like they're looking for our group to kind of start some training platforms that we can, we can offer, you know, to go into a high school or to go into our younger um, generations and, and teach them. Um, so this, yeah. I think this would be a great start um, of, of mm -hmm. us kind of putting together some kind of training platform on you know, what it means to be a self-advocate and, and hear it from, you know, straight from, from a self-advocate and not yeah. like myself or Molly, um, yeah. cause it means so much more. So I would love to actually jump on the bandwagon with this as well. So we just started at venture doing pre as well. Okay. Good. Um, due to our CARF accreditation, we are now allowed to, um, you know, give services to the students out there in Adams County. And we're also doing Brown County. Um, and we've ran into the same thing um, as far as students not being involved in their IEP. And it's mm -hmm. mind blowing that they just, they're not involved. They don't know what to ask. They don't know what to say. And if they could have some guidance, that would be a wonderful thing. Wonderful yes. thing for them to be a part of. It's really cool. You know, I, I think it like are the person centered planning with the, um, you know, with how we develop ISPs now. I mean, that just kind of makes sense that that's the same right. way we would plan an, an education plan as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so what advocates, what do you guys, do you have any say in this? Hey, Marcy, I know you're always, you always got some comments too. Don't be afraid to speak up. Um, you guys have any uh, thoughts or? And our, our, our practice share class, there is a page about IEPs <clears throat> where it just says, ask questions like what you want, what you don't want, um, how much it's going to cost, but what do you need? But I, and our, our practice share books, they, there is a page about the IEPs. Okay, good. And what's that in again, Sherry? Project mm -hmm. Sure. Oh, Project Sure, good. And so that's what uh, Scioto County, um, Teresa, Bill, and Sherry in the fall are going to be taking Project Stir into high schools. And I thought about Molly through your presentation. That's a lot of like what Project Stir talks about. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and kind of helps us start thinking about. So um, I think that'll be great. Marcy, I see your hand is raised. You can also talk about. What we're going, what me and Barb are going to be talking about today in charting life course, you can bring your portfolio that has about you, not what they put for you with your SSAs, want, you know, put in your ISP in your portfolio, you can write or if you can't write, have someone to write what you want to write for the goals you want to have and the good life you want to have. And it, um, that helps too. Uh, awesome. So I was kind of really hoping that um, that would be said. So thank you, Marcy. And uh, for Molly, Sam, for you guys, if you have not heard of Charting the Life course, that is our next presentation. Um, and even if your county board or, you know, your SSA department's not on board with Charting the Life course, this can be used by by individual self-advocates. And we're, um, so we're going to be talking about that. But um, I think that these are tools that you know, maybe we can, we can help as an advocacy group get into our high schools as well. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I like to say something. Yeah. Either we're typing. Okay, good. Or. Other.
things. They have to know how to go to ask what they want or need. Case in point, Sherry and myself fighting the right to get married or other things. Right, exactly. And it's kind of knowing knowing who to go to and and how to ask for sure. And just how to have the confidence to speak up and speak out. Mm -hmm. right? Because I think, yes. I think as a high school student, as middle school or high school student, you know, you're sitting there with, you know, professionals, you know, uh, people that mm -hmm. um, you may not feel comfortable with. Your parents are sitting there who tell you what you have to do and when to do it and how to do it all the time. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think, uh, I think it, it would be hard, you know, to, to yeah, speak out. For them, it is. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, I think they they need to know that it's okay to ask questions because a lot of them yeah. they think like, well, I don't understand that, so I'm just going to I'm just not going to ask anything about it and I'm just going to sit here, you know, like mm -hmm. saying that like, hey, can you guys go over that again? I I want to, you know, I want to know what you mean by this or you know, asking questions I think is important. Well, it's kind of like, you know, what we do with discovery um, for an ISP meeting, it's almost like we need to do that with a high school student is like, it'd be all about that student and what they want and what they need individually before we even go to, into that team meeting, which what charting, charting the life course, the portfolio and, and kind of those tools I think would really help. Uh, Travis? Um. When it comes to asking questions, you know, kind of getting more knowledge, I've always used the moniker, you know, the only dumb question is a question that is not asked. Right. So, I mean, if you want to know, ask it, you know, because you're never going to know. Right. Unless you do. So. For sure. For sure. All right, cool. Um, anybody else have any questions for Molly? I think this, again, kind of gives us a good starting point to, to start working on something. Um, I think that I, what I foresee is our group creating some trainings to be able to, uh, you know, go into high schools and teach a little. Yeah, if you, if anybody has any questions or would be interested in, you know, uh, volunteering for if students have questions, if I could get a hold of you through Zoom or Google Meets or anything like that, that would be great. So, yeah. No molly what time of the day is typically um like the wing you would want to get a hold of or like it it would probably have to be scheduled because i meet with students from 7 30 in the morning to 4 in okay. the afternoon so it would probably have to be scheduled but okay awesome well that's probably definitely. better for us too yeah most definitely good yeah yeah i definitely think that all of our advocates would be willing to to help so yes um, yeah so i'm excited okay great all right well thank you molly and uh thank you nathan for putting molly's name out there thank you yep all right, Sherry. Okay, now it's to change the life course guest speaker with Marcy Strider. And Barb. Um, so just to kind of give everybody a little bit of background on um, kind of our group. Our group has, uh, we typically meet in person uh, before the pandemic and about I don't know, 40 to 60 individuals and providers and uh, would be at our group. And it was really big and kind of overwhelming. And we were kind of stuck in this rut of like this certain routine, eating pizza, you know, socializing and having a little bit more fun than creating change. So this year, after the pandemic last year, this year, we kind of thought, you know what, we need to get back to kind of the basics. And um, SOCOG really wants this advocacy group to be talking more about individual and policy level issues. You know, issues that we have when we go out into the community and we're like, you know what, that's not fair, that's not right, it needs to be different. Whether it's in the community, the school, workplace, whatever. Um, so that's kind of our been our focus um, these last couple months. And um, this month, our topic was 
know yourself, know what you need, and know how to get it. Uh, so we have invited Barb and Marcy on um, to talk. I went through Charting the Life course, a, a small little um, training uh, that SOCOG held, and it was really eye-opening to kind of learn about this program because it was developed by um, advocates and their families and uh, people that actually served and, you know, live in the shoes, uh, walk in the shoes of a person with a disability. So um, I learned a lot and um, I'm hoping that you guys are interested after Barb and Marcy talk and then maybe we can actually put on a training uh, just with our group. Um, and invite advocates uh, from our region and, and uh, do a training. So I think, I do not see Barb on. I told her noon and I think she had another training right before this. So she should come on soon. But Marcy, do you want to kind of take the floor and introduce yourself, kind of tell what your um, involvement was with the program and um, kind of talk about your portfolio maybe? Oh, okay. That was a... Uh thing me and Bart was going to do. Um, okay, yeah, what, yeah, whatever. Um, we can wait uh, for Bart too. Yeah, my name is Marcy Strauder, and I'm from Franklin County, but I used to live in Scioto County in Portsmouth, where Bill and Sherry are, and so I know the neighborhoods and everything really well, but I just wanted to see you guys. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And so, um, I with I'm a Project Star State trainer. I'm an Ohio Tech ambassador, which I just had a training. Feel like the Energizer Bunny. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being here. I appreciate it, and you did awesome today. And yeah, and so with charting the life course, this is my portfolio right here so one thing that i like is when it says what is important to me so when my providers come in um they know what i like to do and what's important to me so they can look on here and see hey she has a project stir meeting on zoom how are we going to do this for her so they know ahead of time if i tell them hey I have projects there. They know I really like it. Uh, I like going out with friends. They they know they know that. They know the places I like to go, like talking on Zoom for girls' night, go to the mall, and stuff like that. Just hang out with friends. They know all of this. So I would like to. I like them to before they start working with me. I like for them to read my portfolio and my ISP. There's not a lot of people that do that, but I try to add a little flavor to it. Um, and then I write to my providers how to support me. And so they look at this, like, I can't stand for a provider to be late. That's just the worst, because I have things to do. And if I'm late, you make me look bad. So, um, I, I name all these things so they can write it down and know what it is that I like. Um, uh, this part, one page thing, and uh, it says about me right here too. The one page description and like how I, what I like to do and different things and what people admire about me. And then, so these are your past and prayer, your present experiences that you have, like tra your trajectory and you name off things that happen from you, the good things that happened to you in the past and in the future, what you want for your future. If there's something that you want to change from your past to make your life better, you can write it on here. And this is what your trajectory is. Very cool. Marcy. Huh? Where could you get one of those? I, portfolios. Um, you can print them out online. The reason how I got this, I'm also in Project Stir 
we teach charting the life course too. So we got certified to teach people. Well, we we are, I we are certified to teach Project Star too. Yes, yeah. it's all so, so you just talk to the people from Charting the Life Course, and they can come like me and Bob Bart. If she gets on here teaching you all this, you can be certified. You can see we can be certified to teach self advocates across the state about charting the life course and like i think that would be awesome for our group or like to have some some of us be trained to teach this okay so right here i have a vision vision for a good life so my top one is i want to marry my boyfriend and um i'm working on that when i go to you know, go listen in conferences at the state house and everything. And so that's one thing I want to do. And I still want to do conferences and things like that stuff that I'm passionate about. And then you have down here, what you don't want for your good life. And I have right here, no drama, because drama brings you down. And you don't want that, that stops your what you're doing and what you're passionate about. So then I also have my trajectory, my integrated star. And right here I have working for Ohio, working with Ohio at home because when I did this portfolio, I just started with a new um, care provider agency. So it was a new adventure for me. And so working with Ohio at home, I don't know if y'all know that provider agency or not. We also have a remote support company called MedFrall. But all the stuff that I need, like technology is what I use, what, are, what people admire about me, um, all the things the people that help me, uh, how would I get places, Uber, Lyft, all the trans transportations to get me where I need to do to do my goal in my integrated star. I am working to do a new one because I did this one in 2019. Okay. <laughs> so since I found out that I can do a new one and they got a new uh, material to it, I'm going to do an I'm going to do another one. One thing that I want to do is like put in there like, I wanna do more public speaking. I wanna work with more technology. Like I am, I do, I'm like the spokesperson of my provider agency in the disability part, like going to the OACB conference. I would go in there, I would say, hey, we have remote support. We have an HPC mm -hmm. company. so. That got me little caught my own business cards. And when the boss, the big owner can't be there, he sends me because I talk to self advocates and I know a lot of people. Yes, you do. That is for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so how, how often should you update that uh, portfolio? Is it a yearly thing like before each of your ISP meetings or just it, kind of it, when it, things it, change in your life? It, when things change your life and whenever you want to change it, you can. If you feel like, hey, I want to use, I want to do this technology thing. Okay, mm -hmm. you do something else and put in your star. Hey, I want to start this new chapter. Technology. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, and Barb. Hi. 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 Hi, Marcy. We, uh, you? we. We finished a few minutes early. So Marcy was just kind of walking us through the portfolio. So hopefully kind of once you start talking and everything, we kind of understand it a little bit, but um, uh, yeah. So we'll just let you guys kind of tag team and we're just excited to learn more about the program. And, and Barb, we just got done talking to a transition coordinator. Our, we're, our group is looking to start helping high school students learn how to advocate for themselves. We just learned that basically they don't, 
they aren't involved in building their IEPs, didn't know that. They don't, they don't know what to ask, how to be involved, how to speak up for themselves. Um, so that's just kind of, we're, we're putting our toes in the water and trying to figure out a way that we can kind of start helping with that. Um, and so, you know, taking Project STIR into high schools, uh, pre-ed programs, charting the life course, I think could go right along with that and being really good tools for um, us to teach high school students about. Um, uh, so anyways, we'll, we'll let you have the floor. Thank you, Courtney. Thank you. Oh, that's awesome. <clears throat> you know, it's interesting that um, the transition, the rule, the, you know, for transition says that people don't have to be at their meetings, but their thoughts about what they want to do has to be included and that students should be part of identifying how they can be supported, how to best support them. And so that's right in line with charting the life course and the portfolio. And it's exciting because some of the tools that charting the life course has are really specifically for transition. So they could really help those high school students think about what do I want to do next? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I developed some PowerPoints, Marcy, and I thought I could share my PowerPoint. And then I have a slide where I'll say, Marcy, now you, will you talk about your one-page person-centered description and can you talk about what's on it? So is it okay if I start sharing my PowerPoint? And Absolutely. You, you yeah, and I can sure. flip back and forth, okay? Okay. And I apologize. I just got off training some new SSAs in the state for three hours and they ended at noon. And so I was like, okay, bye everybody. Yep. <laughs> I gotta <No>. go. <laughs> we appreciate it, Barb. I, I stole Marcy too from a tech ambassador event. And <laughs> so both of you have been had busy, busy mornings. So we appreciate you being here. Thank you, Courtney. Thanks yep. for the opportunity. And I'm gonna share my PowerPoint and where is it? Holy cow, I lost my PowerPoint. Hold on, there it is. Okay, I know it's there. <laughs> Just uh, while she's getting her PowerPoint pulled up, any of our members, have you heard of charting the life course? Do you, does your county board or your SSA currently use it? Anybody, Travis, I saw you raise your hand. Um, I've heard of it. Not 100% sure if we use it on a daily basis or not, but okay, it would be a good thing to use, I would think. Okay, Absolutely. cool. Absolutely. Anybody cool. else? Um, Molly, have you heard of it? Um, I have heard of it, yeah. Okay. I think it would be a great tool to use. Okay, yeah. cool. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let me get my PowerPoint slides up. Oh, it's and um please. <laughs> oh, bless you, bless you. If anybody mm -hmm. has any questions, please, please, please. Um uh jump in and ask because Marcy and I are good with answering questions when you ask them. So <laughs> please feel free, right, Marcy? Yep. We think on our feet. Yeah. So let me talk a little bit about charting the life course and really just focusing on the person-centered portfolio. Um, we have an hour. This takes more than an hour to help people actually do their portfolio. When Marcy and the Projector trainers did theirs. Um, it took a whole day because we learned so much and they would stop and they would do some things and learn some stuff. And so it's not something that we can take you through, but we're going to talk about it. And if you, one second and then I'll call on you. And if you want to learn more and actually start doing your own portfolio, let us know and we'll, we'll um, do something with your group more to take you through it. And mm -hmm. I don't see your name. I'm sorry, but somebody raised his hand. I can't see who you are. Yeah, go ahead. Um, there was a question asked before you stepped on, on the Zoom as to where we can download or get these forms from. Okay, everything is on lifecoursetools.com. Okay. Lifecoursetools.com. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh huh. So we have a grant in Ohio. The Department of Developmental Disabilities gave us a grant to o the Ohio State University to share information about charting the life course with people with uh -huh. experience. So self-advocates, families, 
and professionals. So if you want us to do a more in-depth uh, work with you, we're happy to do that. Contact us, there's no cost. So let's talk about charting the life course. First of all, it's the only person-centered approach I know of that was developed by people with disabilities and their families. So everything else was developed by professionals. Here's how you do it. Here's what you should write. This was developed by families and people with disabilities who said, hey, we want a good life. This is what we want. And what's really cool is that Ohio is part of about 26 states that use charting the life course. All, of, you know, with everybody, with babies, with children, with transition students, with adults, with people with developmental disabilities, people who are in jail, um, people who have mental health challenges, uh, people who are older. It's for everybody. It's not just for people with disabilities. And what we want to do in Ohio is share information about charting the life course. So if you know any other group that wants to hear, we're happy to share. <laughs> but what we want is we want everybody to have a life where they have the right to live, love, have boyfriends and girlfriends, <clears throat> work, play, learn, and do what they want to do want to do in their community. Sorry about my voice. I guess talking for three hours takes a toll on my voice. It in other words, we want people to have a good life, a better life, not just a plan. And I'm going to tell you this, and maybe you don't know it, but I'm going to tell you because I'm also a sister. I had two brothers with disabilities and I worked in um, for Cuyahoga County, which is Cleveland. And I know that there is nowhere in rule that says you have to have an ISP meeting. Money. So using, nope, Money for, nope yeah. not in rule, not from, C, not from Medicaid. It says you have to have a plan. It has to be reviewed at least once a year and it has to be well, developed with uh, the person and the family and the providers. Be more done. It doesn't say you have to have a meeting. So I don't know how many of you hate your meetings, nor does it say you have to lead your meetings. But what it does say is we need to develop the plan to help you have the life you want, which means you've got to tell us <laughs> what you want, okay? So that's what we want to focus on, not the ISP, not the meeting, but you sharing with people what you want in your life. And you don't have to have a meeting. And, it, and the, the beauty of the Charting the Life course is, I don't know how long your ISPs are. How many pages are they? People in the state tell me anywhere from eight to 80 pages. How many are your guys's? Throw out some numbers. Throw out some numbers. How long is your ISP? Less than 20. Yay! That's a short one. Yeah. But even 20 pages, who's so going to read 20? Yeah. <laughs> you know? I think odd is 10. 10? I think. You think 10? Yes. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Even 10 is a lot. The portfolio, I don't know if um, uh, Marcy showed you hers, but it's only a big piece of paper folded in half. That's it. So it is one large piece of paper. It's four, four like regular sheets like this, you know, four, four sheets like this. That's it. And so let's talk about that portfolio. Mm. The front part of the portfolio is called a one-page person-centered description. So I, my brother, Nick, had cerebral palsy. And every time people would talk at his meeting, they would tell me he had cerebral palsy. And I would sit there and go, really? <laughs> like, I didn't know that? Oh. Duh. <laughs> and Nick didn't know that. <coughs> so it's not about talking 
about what your disability is. It's about talking about who you are as a human being. So we would, uh, on the one page person center description, we ask, what do people like about you? What are your qualities? What's important to you? And then what should we do to help you? What would be helpful? Mm -hmm. So here's my one page person center description. I do a lot of training. So what people like about me is I'm uh, passionate, I'm knowledgeable, I know what I'm talking about, hopefully. <laughs> I'm prepared. Um, that what's important to me is that you are engaged. If you have questions, you ask me. Um, that I really appreciate you answering the questions and how to best support me. Ask me questions, ask me for clarification and respect our time together. This is my brother Nick's one page person center description. It's not on the paper, on the form because I really like just using a Word document. Um, so you see that it says Nick the Greek. It doesn't say Nick Seferis because Nick liked to be called Nick the Greek. So this is about him. It doesn't say he has cerebral palsy. And under great things about him is the thing that my 96, mm -hmm. five, six year old mother always says about Nick and that is he's ornery. He was ornery. Uh, but people liked him because he had a sense of humor and he was honest. You asked him a question, he was going to be straight with you. He wasn't going to mess around. What was important to him was not going to Walmart, not eating at McDonald's, not going bowling. That's not enough. We need to know what's really important to people. Talking to me every night. Um, having privacy. Our Greek culture, we're Greek. And so our church, our religion, our traditions, everything like that was important to him. Listening to his music loudly, not quietly, mind you, loud. It's a good thing I like some of his music or else we would have been fighting. And he liked to go to the bar down the street from where he lived and have a 7-7 and watch the Indians games. Under how to best support, you see it's in quotes because he said this. And you see it says I because he said it. We should never write I unless the person said it. So um, Nick needed to be fed. So how do you support him? Feed him with a teaspoon. Don't look over his shoulder. Don't yell at him. I can hear you. Uh, don't yell and don't use a parent voice, you know. Hi, Nick, how are you? He would just go, oh my God. Don't they know old enough to be his, their father? Because look at him, he's a small man. He never weighed more than 70 pounds. So they always thought he was a kid. Uh, when you put me in bed, put me on my stomach. Don't give me fruit or juice and I'm most comfortable in my power chair. So those are the things he would write. And he would tell people, we would tell people, here's a little bit about Nick. So Marcy, can you talk about your one page person center description? Well, I was just talking about that Bart, but I'm gonna do it again. Okay, so I have right here, what people admire about me. I put my personality. Um, and I put, now I do, now I like to travel. Um, people uh, like working with me when, when I was in the office at work. Um, What is important to me, they know Project STIR is, they know my conferences are, I like hanging out with friends. And just like how best to support me, uh, I was telling them one thing I don't like is a provider being late. <laughs> and uh, what else I have here? Uh, Yeah, my staff being late and, and keep track and keep track of time. 
Yep. <clears throat> Good. Because they're not only on their time, they're on my time too. So if they're talking on the phone or something like that and gets a phone call, they're taking up my time if they take like 20 minutes and I only have $5, five hours mm -hmm. of, of uh, hours with the provider. So that's taking up my time. Awesome, Marcy. So yeah. Marcy, you and I have worked together, but you and I have also, uh, I've never worked, um, and by work, I mean Project Stir stuff. So um, I've never been your staff, but we also have a relationship outside of Project Stir and um, some other stuff. So I've heard you say some other things. Can I maybe share some things and you tell sure. me if I got it right? Sure. So oh. one thing I know is important to you is that people don't put words in your mouth. Oh no, <laughs> I don't like that at all. Because you have said a couple of times, I wanna say my words. <laughs> I don't want yeah. people telling me what to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, okay. So that's something I know. And it's okay for a staff or your friends or your family to say, you know, I think this would also be on my one, you know, you should write this down because that's what I see. Um, and under what people like and admire about you, Marcy, if I can share and if I get it wrong, just tell me. Okay. Um, but you're very passionate. And I'm you're very about progress, sir, and all the other things that I'm involved in. I take it very seriously. I take it seriously like, because it's my job and I'm here to help people. And that's what I went and that's what I went to college for because I went to college for a year to be a, a human service assistant. So I can work in different places because I have that certification. Awesome. Awesome. And I'm guessing, Marcy, because we're also Facebook friends and you and I have mm -hmm. other opportunities to just sit as women and chat. So I also think something that's important to you is that you kind of um, get a little pampered sometimes. Yes, I like, we, we have our girls night on every other Monday. Uh, there's advocates on there and there's people and organizations like Barb and it's just like we're free and like we're talking about stuff. It's nothing in our ISP or anything. We're just talking just like <laughs> we're all normal people. There's nothing about us. We're just like everybody else. We're not from Mars. That's right. That's right. And I also know, Marcy, that you like to get your hair done. Yes. And pedicures. Yes. I like, <laughs> I like doing that. I haven't been able to do it because of uh, COVID, but um, I have uh, my um, my staff. Uh, I've made them. They have wanted to become my stylist, do my nails and do my hair. We got beauty pot products off of Amazon, and we made our own little salon since we can't go out. Awesome. Awesome. So I guess what I want people to hear is that Marcy didn't write what we typically see on ISPs. Oh, Barb likes to go to Walmart and eat out at McDonald's and go bowling. It's like, no, Marcy likes to go get a pedicure and a manicure and be pampered and uh, advocate and be part of groups and speak her mind and all sorts of stuff. So that's what we're looking for. So awesome, Marcy, I'm gonna go on, okay? Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, oh, so I wanna tell you about Chris Nickage. I don't know if any of you have heard of Chris, um, but Chris is from Florida. One of the best stories I've heard in the last year. Isn't it cool? Yes. So Chris is from Florida. Chris is the first person with Down syndrome that participated in an Ironman competition and the first one to successfully complete the Ironman competition. So maybe you don't know Ironman, but I got to read it. So when, you're, when you compete in the Ironman competition, 
first you have to swim almost two and a half miles in open water, which means a lake or a river. And that takes about two and a half hours. So that's a lot of swimming. That ain't getting in the pool and swimming. That means you're swimming for two hours straight. Then you get out of the water and then you have to ride a bicycle for 112 miles. And that typically takes eight hours. So you swam for two, you bike for eight, and then when you're done with that, you got to run 26 miles and that takes about six hours. And you've got to do all three things right in a row on one day and be done in 16 hours. Yikes, I can't even imagine. Wow. I know, I know that's what I say. But on the right, what I love is Chris's parents told him you know, you need to write down your dreams. So he wrote, he's got like a wall in his house. There's a, uh, there's videos on the um, internet and he was part of an NBC sports special, but there's like a wall in one of his, the rooms. It's like a yeah. whiteboard. And he would write on Monday, I'm gonna run this. this far. On Tuesday, I'm gonna do this. On Wednesday, I'm gonna rest. And he wrote a plan of how he was preparing to compete in the Ironman. But his family also said, write down your dreams. So I don't know if you could read the whiteboard, but I'm gonna read it for you. He wrote, I wanna buy my own car. I wanna buy my own house. I wanna get a smoking hot blonde wife from Minnesota. <laughs> Now, why he thinks he's got to go to Minnesota to get that wife, I have no clue because he lives in Florida. <laughs> I have no clue. I think it's a, I think it's a riot. Yeah. He wants to have his own money so he can take care of himself and his family. And he wants to be a famous public speaker. Now, why do I show you that? <clears throat> because all the specialists, the psychologists who study, how does the mind work and how do we do things in our life have said, when you write down your goals, you are more than likely to work towards them and reach them. So I want to talk about how in charting the life course, we talk about writing down what you want to do, your vision, your goals, whatever words you want to use. So this is called a trajectory. And on the trajectory, <clears throat> excuse me, on the far right side, you see a box that says, what's my good life, a vision for a good life, what I want. And on the bottom is a vision of what I don't want. So usually people, when I ask them, what do you want? They tell me, I want a boyfriend. I want a girlfriend. I want my own place. I want privacy. Um, I want a job I like, okay? Not a job, but a job I like. And when I ask people, what don't you want? The number one answer is drama. I don't want drama. And I have to ask people, what does drama mean? And it's people bossing me around, people yelling all day long, um, people not getting along. <clears throat> So think about the trajectory helps you figure out what do you want in your life, but also what you don't want, because that's just as important. And I'm just going to focus on those two boxes right now, but I also want to talk about life domains. So whenever we meet somebody new, what's the first thing we ask them? What do you do? Right? So what do you do during the day? What's your job? What do you do? daily life and employment. These are not skill areas. They're the way we live our life. And then we ask people, where do you live? Oh, I know that neighborhood. In fact, Marcy and I, a couple weeks ago, were on our girls' night call, <laughs> our Zoom call. Somebody was talking about moving and they had to find a new apartment. And everybody was like, oh, have you tried this neighborhood? Or have you looked over here? And it was so funny. Everybody was like 
talking about where they live and why they like their neighborhood. So we talk, that's the way we talk about a good life, where we live. Social and spirituality, our friends, that we have friends, who our friends are. If we do have a faith, and you know, is it important that you go to church or temple or meetings? And then how we feel healthy, whatever that means to us. And then do you feel safe? How do you like living there? Do you feel safe? And one woman said, I don't like living there because you've got to cross this busy highway to get to the stores. So she said, I don't feel safe doing that. And then advocacy. What do you do? How do you speak up? Uh, what are you involved with? Where do you share your gifts? So notice these are not skill areas. We don't talk about brushing your teeth or your productivity <coughs> or um, we talk about how you live your life. So Marcy, <laughs> Marcy, I had to put the slides in because I was like, I don't remember where Marcy's going to talk. So I have to put it here for me to remember. Can you share a little bit about your trajectory of your good life? Okay, so my trajectory I did in 2019. So I'm planning on doing another one. I just have to get to it because I'm an Energizer Bunny and I've been a million places, it seems like, in a day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so where's your trajectory? The middle. Yeah, there we go. There we go. <laughs> um, there we go. Um, this is my trajectory of people that have supported me uh, through that of my boyfriend and my mom. I still carry her memory on of things that I do. And in the past, things I did was like living with family and now I'm independent. And this next one is Project Stir in the training and how my life is now. And then down here is like what my life was then when I first started Project Stir. I so how were you when you first started Project Stir, Miss <laughs> Marcy? I, I didn't know, I, I knew like, I didn't know, I knew how to speak up for myself, but when I took Project Stir, it opened more possibilities and showed me more. And then after when I started, and then once I got in the next part of it, I knew how to speak up and knew how to tell people in my family what I wanted and not just being passive. Just like, oh, I used to say like, oh, okay, that we can do that. Now I can say the meaning of, hey, I want to do this or I don't want to do this. It's not going to help me. So I think from that, when I first started Project Stir until now, and now I've learned a whole bunch. It feels like a dictionary, but I love it. <laughs> Thanks, Marcy. So tell us what you don't want in your life. I don't want drama. I don't like it when family members tell me what to do and think that I'm fine. Um, like, and don't like believe in like my dreams and like what's going on and not realizing that I'm adult even though I look like I'm 12. <laughs> and so I advocate for that daily <laughs> to show family members that I'm grown, I pay my rent, I pay my bills, and I can do all this stuff that you're thinking I can't do. Yeah, it's great. Absolutely, Marcy. <clears throat> Absolutely. Marcy, did anything happen in your past life, your past experiences that like didn't work out so good or maybe made people think you <clears throat> couldn't make decisions or um, I don't know. Uh, you know. um, if people didn't think like when I lived with my mom, I wasn't, I mean, towards the end before she passed away, you know, I was independent and, you know, spoke up 
But before then, I was like, like I said, I was passive. Oh, I don't care. Um, I, I let my family take care of me instead of taking care of myself. I made them do all the, they were doing all the decision making. So finally, towards in the middle, and then when my mom passed away, I call it when she passed away, I had to get my big girl pants on. I had to find, I had to uh, still have my job. I had to, I lived with a couple of roommates that didn't work out. So I moved in by myself and now I, I pay my own rent, my, my own electricity, buy my own groceries. Um, I have my own staff that will take me there and not worry about, did they tell you, I used to have staff that says, I don't have enough gas money and I can't take it. Now I have staff that can do that and I get things for my house. And right now I'm at peace, even though I'm about to move. <laughs> <laughs> That's another, that's another thing. But Marcy, that's so powerful to hear that, you know, <clears throat> that you kind of sat back and let other people speak for you and make decisions. Hey. And all of a sudden it was like, whoa, I, I gotta, I gotta, like you said, put your big girl pants on and take control of this, uh, this show, it's mine and this is what I want. Awesome, thank you, Marcy, that's cool. And I love being independent. And you do live in your own apartment. So what did you learn? What were those steps like in the middle? What did you have to work on to be able to live in your own apartment and uh, go to conferences and uh, be a tech ambassador and a project star trainer. What were those things in the middle that you had to do? Well, I had to learn, I had to learn, like I had to tell my boss, hey, I had these conferences and I had to write it down to give it to her. I have this to do and I have this time off. So with the company I used to work with, they went by my schedule and they meet it in the middle with me. And so I didn't use to use a planner, but now I use one. And so if I have, if I'm working that day, cause I work on Mondays, I write down working and then all the rest of the time, I write down all the speaking events and the project stir things, the tech ambassador things look on there and then manage my time. One thing that's hard is you got to tell somebody no. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> that's part of being a consultant, Marcy. <laughs> yeah, you got to It's hard to say no cuz I love advocating so much, but you got to think about who you who first gave the opportunity to opportunity to you and then which one is really important to you that you can really, really teach on. Yep. Awesome. And Marcy, I love that you said you had to start using a planner. So that was one of those things that would have gone in the middle of the trajectory. What do you have to do so that you can be part of all these activities and keep track? You had to start using a planner. Um, another thing I heard you say was you had to tell your provider, look, this is what I want to do. And then they had to say, okay, we can help you do this. We'll move. I don't know. I'm making it up, Marcy, but maybe they had to say, maybe we'll change the hours to help you to, so that you can do this and we'll take it away from this activity because, you know, that's what will fit in your hours and your budget. You know, this is a priority. This is what I want. So you can't go to the beauty shop this week because you are, you want to go to two conferences and I don't know, I'm making it up, Marcy, yeah. but. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like you, you have to do that. And then what I do is if I need, okay, for example, I told my mm. advocate coordinator, they're both two people 
that I needed somebody to help me on my tech ambassador presentation. Mm -hmm. And so I told them a week or two in advance and they got me somebody. Nice. And it so happened to be my coordinator. <laughs> nice, nice. And Marcy, you know, um, you and I, we don't work, you know, we don't have any kind of a paid relationship, but you know, what, what day was it, Marcy? I texted you and I said, Marcy, we got to talk. <laughs> I think it was, wasn't it last Thursday? I can't remember, Marcy. Oh, no, I can look in my it phone. Was, but it was last, it, no, it was last Saturday. I thought it was the weekend because I thought you and I are doing stuff on our own time. You know, we're, we're kind of coordinating this. And well, I thought... Not it might have been then. I, I've had so much going on. Can't even remember. But it might have been the weekend. I think it was, Marcy. I think it was. <laughs> but also, just, you know, like you said, my time is, is important. Your time is important. And we were like, okay, let's get this done. Let's finish it. And we, we did. We were like, okay, we got it. We're set for Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah. I know. I know. So let me move on. I'm also looking at the clock. So the last tool <clears throat> on the portfolio is called an integrated star. And we really need, when we're thinking about what goals do I have in my life? What do I want to work on? We need to think about help or support in five areas, not just through the county board or through your provider, but what other areas? So let's, let me tell you about my brother, Nick. My brother Nick one year told us he wanted to go on vacation. Well, how many of you want to go on vacation? Yeah, <laughs> I know. I'm hoping mm. that soon we can travel but safely, but we all want to go on vacation, right? <clears throat> so in the star, you see the star on the bottom, you would put your goal. And his goal was to go to Disney, not just to go on vacation, but to go to Disney world in Orlando by himself without anybody else with a disability. Because his team said, well, we can, there are groups that go. You can, no, he said, I want to go by myself. I'm sitting there as his sister going, where the heck did this come from? I have no clue. But he said, I want to go by myself. So we had to first look at, well, what are Nick's strengths? You know, what does he bring to the table? What can he do? Well, he knew what a vacation was. He knew how to plan. He had some money, not enough. So he had to figure out how he was going to save. Um, and he, here's the most important thing. He told people what he wanted to do. Just like Marcy said, I want to go to these conferences. I want to be a project star trainer. Yeah, I want to do my project star training. I want to be tech ambassador. He told people, I want to go to Disney. That's a personal strength. He told people, this is my goal. Then you think about who can help you, not paid people, because we're not there yet. But who do you know that can help you? Well, you know what? Usually we think friends and families, neighbor, but who? So Nick told people, I want to go to Disney. And my, our cousins right away said, whoa, you want to go to Disney? Um, what do you need to go to Disney? Do you need a suitcase? I'll buy you a suitcase for your birthday. Instead of getting you a shirt for Christmas, I'll get you what you need for your trip. Um, other people he knew were like, whoa, we just went to Disney. Let me give you my book on Disney. So once he said what he wanted to do, people were able to identify, oh, I can help you, I can give you some information, or I have a friend who can help you. We're still not talking about staff, we're just talking about people he knew. Technology. Nick used a laptop, Nick knew how to use the internet, he knew how to look for things on the internet, so he did look online. Um, Nick also used a power chair. That was very important. We had to figure out how can you fly with a power chair, which is not easy. <laughs> okay. 
Oh, it's 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 hard. Yes, it is. A lot of stuff. You got to do a lot of stuff mm. to get that chair on the, on the plane. Mm. Um, <laughs> so some of you know, I can I can tell by your comments. Um, also, his other uh, technology. What can? How do we pack it? How do we make sure it's safe? How do we make sure his wheelchair stays safe? Safe. And his wheelchair got damaged on the airplane. So. Oh know, gosh. Yeah. Oh gosh is right. Ugh. Anyway. <laughs> I know. I know. We'll go on because it'll bring back lots of memories of me having to talk to lots of people. Um, and then. Where can anybody who wants to go to Disney get help? Well, you can go to a travel agent. You can go to uh, the library and get books and DVDs. Uh, you can even go online. You can use technology and go to YouTube and websites to find out. <clears throat> and then what could staff do to help him? Well, his provider helped him find somebody who would volunteer to go with him and take care of him. Nick had to pay for them to go. Um, his therapist came up, they said, you know, you have this big power chair and you're gonna be at Disney, which means you're gonna be outside. So you should think about getting a sunshade for your wheelchair so you don't get sunburned and somebody got him a sunshade. I mean, what wonderful friends. It was like, oh, how cool. Um, what else? I'm trying to think. So we all get help from different places. And not just the county board or our provider, but other people too. So Marcy, can you share something that's in the center of your integrated star and how you're getting help from all five areas of your start. Okay. I have my provider, Ohio at home. Where yeah, I what's in the middle, Marcy, what's in the middle of your star? I think you and I talked about living on your own. Yeah, I haven't got to that one yet. I have to print out the new one, but okay. this is my old one. Okay, what's in the middle of your star? Uh, working at Ohio at home. Okay. Um, I just got to their provider agency and working with them to get services from them. Um, I have my technologies, what I have, Alexa, a portal, and technologies I use. And for the server, uh, this one, uh, I use transportation. And for the community when I have presentations and conferences and how I get there, Uber and Lyft are a provider. Good. So Marcy, if I can backtrack a little bit, <clears throat> in the middle of your star was working for Ohio at Home, right? Yeah, like what I meant by, by that was like working with them getting their, receiving their services. Oh, getting a new provider. Awesome. Yeah, that's what, yeah, that's what we like working because my provider helped me. She was my uh, coach at the time. Okay. And we put working with Ohio at home because I just now get it started working with them and receiving services for them. Matter of fact, it was like only like maybe a week or two uh, since, till I went to that training. And um, one thing that my provider, my provider did was he told me that um, I can get you assistant, like an assistant when you go to your conferences. So that's what he did. He got me an assistant because my coach wasn't there and we filled it out. And our thing was for me, going to Ohio, working with Ohio at home, receiving their services, and what all kinds of services they do for me with the technology and how to get there. Awesome. Different things like that. And who, like, who, like, who support, and like, I have right here, like, uh, the people that, the people, like, that support me and 
the people that are non-paid and stuff that just makes my life better each day. Good. And Good. changes it. So Marcy, when we talked on Saturday, you also said um, you like living in your own place. So can I kind of walk you through that? Sure. Okay. So we talked about you like having your own apartment and you've got to move for a variety of reasons, but you still want to live in your own apartment. Yeah. So some of, we always start with personal strengths. So I think one of your personal strengths, Marcy, for living in your own apartment is number one, you have a job. So you have money, <laughs> okay? Yeah. You can't live in your own apartment without money, okay? So you have a job and actually you have a couple jobs, right? I have three jobs. I know, <laughs> I know. So you've got money. That's a personal strength. Another personal strength, Marcy, that I've seen over the years I've known you is um, you want to learn new stuff. So you've learned how to cook different kinds of food because you post it on Facebook all the time, right? Yeah. Okay, under relationships, you have a lot of friends that don't get paid to be your, to work, be around you. Yeah. Me, me included, <laughs> right? Because uh, we're part of the, we're part of the girls night. So yeah. there's a whole bunch of us that get together by Zoom uh, because we used to see each other at different stuff. And when the pandemic hit, it was like, mm -hmm. how do we have what's important to us when even though we can't see go visit each other or go have dinner or see each other at conferences, we do Zoom, we do the Zoom calls. And I yeah, missed we, last night. Yeah, we, like, we like the Zoom calls for the ladies night. Yep. And we can have whatever we want to drink <laughs> during ladies night. <laughs> yeah. So um, technology, what tech, you use a lot of technology at home. Oh yeah. I have, I have Alexa, the portal, the ring doorbell. Um, I have a smart lock, but I can open the doors to my phone. That helps me a lot because I can't use my left arm to open the door because it was hard for me. So my service coordinator and the provider owner of the agency that I'm a part of, they came up with this idea for the smart lock. And so like, and I also have a smart smoke detector where if something's smoking or something, it not calls 911 and it calls my provider. Like the other day, a couple of months ago, I was making Chinese food. That's sensitive. And um, we weren't burning anything. The smoke detector came on and it called my provider. He was like, what are you burning? <laughs> I was like, I'm not burning anything. The smoke thing just came on, it's sensitive. Oh no, Marcy, that's too funny. That <laughs> and, is too uh, they, uh, and then I had the, the thermostat, which is when I moved in here, the thermostat was really old and it was hard to see and I have low vision. And so my provider and my service coordinator came up with another surprise. They got me a thermostat where I can control it from my phone and on the little thermostat thing over here. So say if I wanted my heat, on 71, I can do 71 on there. And I can also do it when I'm out, like before I walk in my door. Awesome. Uh, no. really cool. And it's really oh, cool in the winter. <laughs> that is really cool. Mm -hmm. So Marcy, we've got only got a couple minutes. So let me also um, say that for community-based, you mentioned you use Uber and Lyft. And then under eligibility specific, it's your um, uh, your projector coach, your provider, uh, yeah. that, 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 who else gets paid to support you? Uh, my, my service coordinator, mm -hmm. uh, my provider. Okay. And like, 
the things that come out of my technology first waiver. Ah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So I know we're getting close to the end. I only have a couple slides and it's, uh oh, I left the wrong slide in there. Okay, we already did the April 8th, sorry. But just to let you know, <clears throat> on June 3rd and 4th, we're having an Ohio virtual showcase for charting the life course. It's free. Um, you can sign up at frnohio.org and just take two guesses who might be talking at that. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So Marcy's going to talk with some of the Project STIR trainers about how they've used Charting the Life course. I'm going to talk about how to use Charting the Life course to empower and get control over your life. Um, other people are going to talk. Dr. Shelley Reynolds from Missouri, who under whose leadership Charting the Life course was developed, is going to talk. You need to register. <clears throat> And you could do that through frnohio.org. And like I said, it's free. So we hope you can join us. And um, program too. Say it again. I'm sorry. I was telling them it's a really cool program oh, too. It is. It is. And um, I sent Courtney a survey that if you can fill it out, it's just a thumbs up, thumbs down, a couple of questions. And um, <clears throat> if you have any questions, you can ask us or you can, if you think of something later, you can always ask Courtney to pass it along. She knows how to reach us. <laughs> yep. hey, and Barb. if you want us to talk more about charting the life course and how to actually do your portfolio, we're happy. Just reach out. Go ahead. Somebody said something. I'm sorry. Barb, this is Travis. Hi, Travis. Um, the event on the 3rd and 4th of June, will that possibly be recorded by chance, do you think? Um, I think so. Um, we have pre-recorded the sessions because we had, we had over 500 people sign up right away. Wow. I know. And so we couldn't do the, um, so we had to switch the formats and I believe they're going to try and make it available, Travis, but I can't <coughs> swear to it. The reason I ask is I'm going to be on a road trip that week. Ah, oh. Wanted to possibly see it later on, but. Um, you know what? If it's going to be available, join the FRNO Ohio web uh, Facebook page. Okay. Because that'll be, that information will be on that page. Gotcha. Thank you. Sign up for frnohio.org because she sends out like blasts of what's going on and how to access it. Awesome. All right, Thank one you. last question for you, Barb. How would, if we had advocates who wanted to become part of this program, um, are they able to do that? Or do you guys train advocates to um, train others on this program? How, how does that work? Um, the only thing we've done and we've, um, <clears throat> the Project STIR trainers have been trained how to help people develop their portfolios, not on everything charting the life course, but just that narrow piece. Okay. Um, so we have done it through Project STIR because they all have um, coaches mm -hmm. and because it is a developed, it's in the curriculum with written trainers notes. So we can assure that the information is being shared accurately. That makes yep, sense. That make, yep, that makes sense. That makes sense. But the Project so, Stir trainers, I mean, if you know if people are interested in Project Stir, they've done it virtually now. So it's okay, cool. Recorded. Bill and Sherry, are you you guys are Project Stir trainers? Did you get any of this training? No. No? Okay. <laughs> These are, mm. this is for state trainers. I don't think they're state trainers. Yeah, these no. are the no, we're, not, we're county. No. Okay. We're county great, great. County trainers. County trainers. Okay. trainers. Got is, it. Yeah, this was for, thank you, Marcy. This is for the 32 or 34 statewide Project Star trainers. Got it. Okay. Bill Adams, are you the one sitting next to Sherry? 
Yep. I met you, Bill, years ago. I don't know where, but I know I met you. Hi, Bill. I'm Barb. Somewhere. We are married, he said. Yeah, they got married. Oh, congratulations, you two. Awesome. Yep. And That's Bill cool. actually just became a member of the Scioto County Board. Oh, yep. Bill, I'm so excited for you. Yep. So big things yeah. happening down there in Portsmouth, Ohio. Awesome, Bill. We need more people on the boards. I'm so yep. glad you're on. Yes. yes. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, thank you so much, Barb and Marcy, for being here. Um, I hope that you know our advocates got something out of this presentation. And then I will share all the information for your webpage, your upcoming um, uh, webinar on in June, and uh, your Facebook link. Thank so you. Thank we'll get on all of that. And then I will get you a list of participants today and hopefully um, we will all participate in the survey. Oh, for you guys. Awesome. Thank you so okay. much, Courtney. Yep. Thank you everybody Thank for you. attending. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Sherry, Bye. Sherry, just hold on. We'll, we'll adjourn the meeting officially here. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Marcy, um, do you want to go ahead tomorrow. and adjourn okay. the meeting? Yes. Uh, adjourn, adjourn the meeting. All right, do we have a motion? I'll make a motion. Bill says why. Bill? I'll second. Yes. And then Travis second, awesome. All right, guys, have an awesome week and um, pray for no snow, because it's coming. I know, right? <laughs> yes. All right, yeah. All right. Yeah. bye guys. Have a great bye -bye. day. Bye. Yeah. bye, Marcy, thank you. Yeah, bye, bye. Guys. you're welcome. Bye.